Ah. Welcome to 2013. I'm Flameflash.net, episode 86. Not too shabby. As usual, we will start out with the Raptor Report, which enjoyed a um, holiday gaming part two. Because, well, I went back to work as of yesterday, so there was still a lot of opportunity for gaming in the past week since episode 85. So we'll get right to the Raptor Report, because I'm actually fairly rested at the moment, and I have a Pepsi handy. Terraria shows up. I blame the sun. Total blame there. He um, played Terraria a couple of times between other gaming sessions of his own, or um, when I was off of the laptop, say on the couch, playing something else. But we'll get to that. Places in All-Stars Battle Royale for the Vita shows up. It's a good game. I still like it. The cross-saving doesn't always work as well as it should. The Sun has pushed Kratos, for instance, over into the 100 range as far as rank goes. And on the Vita, he's still showing up as in the 90s for some reason. I'm not sure why. Very strange. Magic the Gathering shows up. The kids and I got the holiday box from Santa. And so, of course, have to take some time to organize the cards and see what I got have to. Now, something I need to do now is go back through these cards and find the ones to augment my decks. This, These packs came with four boosters from Return to Ravnica, and while I grabbed one or two things out of them, my main focus was transferring my f four fat pack boxes into this one larger box, which now becomes my standard box. As cards cycle out, I then have their fat pack boxes to stow them away. Unlike last time, uh, there was some cycling. I'm going to make sure to wait until the next expansion actually hits because I made the horrible mistake of removing some cards that didn't need to be. Like cancel in the blue section. Came back. There was no need to get rid of it. Civ 5 shows up. I finally beat the game via science victory. Not sure if I mentioned that last week, but then started a new game. Finally starting to take advantage of the new expansion, the Gods and Kings. Well, it's not really a new expansion at this point, but finally taking advantage of it because prior to that, I wasn't in there. Some of the religion slash faith stuff is definitely weird quite strange how they do it. It's a lot like uh, culture as far as how you accrue and acquire. I'm almost thinking I should restart now that I've seen how the faith system works a little bit better because my initial reaction when, say, a religion had been founded was, uh-oh, I need to probably restart because somebody beat me to find founding a religion when actually they just beat me to founding a pantheon and it's not that big of a deal. So we'll see. 
I may or may not restart. Now that I know some more about the faith system, playing into it, I've started a nice little empire, so I kind of hate to restart and lose all of that. I'm going for a cultural victory this time if I can. But at the same time, I'm going to be peaceful. So it's not as big of a deal to me to, to uh, be in as uh, heavy competition with the other factions out there. I also chose a unique map that really kind of required 12 sieves instead of my usual really high number. I like to go huge map for expansion, exploration purposes, and then put as many sieves as possible on said map. Well, for some reason, every time I tried to do that, I'd immediately be killed by barbarians. Don't know why. So I had to go to just the recommended number. And I think I pushed down the amount of city-states a little bit just to try to make it more about, well, sieving. The city-states are a neat function, but there were far too many in my last game, and it was nice reducing that. Dungeon Defender shows up. This one we definitely can blame the sun on as well. He's been uh, passionately going after some of the achievements and tro um, unlocks in this one, and uh, awesome. Sounds good to me. Sometimes he uh, doesn't budget his time well. As all gamers are known to do occasionally. But all in all, it goes well. Persona 4 for the Vita. This is killing my battery life. It's an absolutely fantastic RPG. It's like holding a digital book. I noticed on the PlayStation Network this evening, Persona 3 is available. I guess both of these games originally came out on the PS2. What I'm not interested in, however, is Persona 3. I don't want a non-handheld version. Even though it's going to be a similar system, similar style, Persona 4, being on the Vita, being in handheld, is really what sells it for me. Because I can play it anywhere. I can put these headsets in, and that M rating, who cares? Because Nobody else is going to be impacted by it, and I can play it anywhere I want to, then. Great! Persona 3? Unless they manage to put PlayStation 2 games as remote play option, there is absolutely no reason for me to get it. Just isn't. Persona 4 is fulfilling a long hole of JRPG that I didn't know was empty. It's blowing Final Fantasy out of the water, frankly. Finally, we have World of Warcraft. Now, I absolutely love looking at the Raptor Report, how much time was invested in games and gaming. Yes, some of it the Sun did, but vacation time was well used bonding and playing with everybody played more while WoW. still at 90 haven't started any other characters for the most part did get my monk finally to level 21 the alliance monk and I'm now six mounts away from hitting another mount achievement because at 20, you're able to go buy six turtles if you're a Pendaren. 
So that's awesome. So all I have to do is get my monk to 40, and boom! There's the mount achievement. To probably also push my uh, the worgen to 40, which would give me even more mounts. That's the weird thing about the uh, World of Warcraft mount system as it is now. If you really want all of the mounts, just level a character to 40 of each race. Boom! You have all of the race's mounts. You do not have to go to Exalted with any of them to get the mounts. It's both strange and good at the same time, in my opinion. Removes another one of those grinds that was obnoxious. But that was the Raptor Report. Lots of uh, focused gaming, especially in World of Warcraft and Persona this time around. But a lot of satisfying gaming. Sun and I are on the verge of hitting 90. So I will have my second level capped character very, very soon. In the vein of World of Warcraft, and you can tell I'm still in vacation mode. Yay, Star Trek robe. For those watching the uh, video format as well. Anyway. Transmog restrictions are going to get lighter in 5.2. So if you have a one-handed weapon or a two-handed weapon, say a two-handed sword, you can now transmog that into a two-handed axe or mace. Likewise, a one-handed sword, mace, axe, swap them around, flip them around. Awesome. That's great. Fantastic, really, even. Just now, as long as we can transmog a fish mace. That's what I'm waiting for. A wielder of fish, I would like to be. Dawn of the Aspects ebook. Ebook. Hmm. Some kind of cereal, too. So, seriously? Sorry. Knack wrote it. And they are going to be starting the first piece in February. I am disgruntled there is not a print version. Red Flare refuses to go digital. And I am going to back her 100% on this. Physical copies of books are superior. Why? You don't need electricity to read them. That's it. Give me a counter to that one, ebook fans. Come on, I dare ya. Candlelight. Moonlight on a full moon. Gives you enough reading light to uh, read. Probably I strain too, but the point is you don't need electricity at all. You don't need to recharge your ebook reader. You just read. You sit and read. So hopefully, at the end of all of these ebooks being released, they will shove them all together and publish. Because I would like to know what's going on with the dragons post Hour of Twilight in Cataclysm, but I'm not going to do it via ebook. Sorry. Last but not least, in the World of Warcraft realm of news, a uh, study has been released saying that World of Warcraft players make ideal employees. Something about being self-starters, self-evaluations being harsher, peer evaluations being more open. It, I don't know if it was the article covering it, because I didn't drill in to see the study myself, or what it was, but it didn't feel like that imp 
impressive of a thing. Maybe it's just scientific studies in general are not overly impressive. If you're questioning that statement, go listen to, say, uh, NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me podcast. Some of the scientific studies that we sink money into are just facepalm stupid. Why? Just why invest the time, energy, money, and resources? Including resources to tie up any loose ends. To those kinds of studies. This study, even. Why? I don't get it. I'm making an ideal employee. Well, duh. Was it ever a doubt? I just... It's a personality trait. It's not accredited to a game. It's accredited to a personality there are generalizing any group of people is just obnoxious to me I suppose it's kind of like standardized testing kids in school you can't successfully standardize test until you standardize teaching a bad teacher is a bad teacher regardless of the subject And not much is going to help them improve. Especially not a test that they suddenly have to lecture to instead of lecturing regarding the subject that they're teaching. It's like, oh look, now I have a checklist. Great. We'll just go down the line. Well, the engaging teachers, the imaginative teachers, go out there, give it their all, and get paid the same amount as the teacher that's just going over a checklist. Perhaps that doesn't slow them down, but the child in the classroom of the engaged teacher is going to be more successful, in my opinion, than the child in the unengaged teacher. It's just a rule of employment engage your employees and then you you're okay it's not if they all play wow it's are they good at what they do don't judge them one way or the other for their hobbies it's just as stupid as for instance the NRA claiming video games cause some of the uh, problems off on the East Coast. It just doesn't make sense. So, we'll hop step a little bit from WoW to the PS3 and Vita. Uh, something called the Network Epics is going to be available as an app on both systems. Now, what does that mean for you and me? It means you can stream movies through yet another service. Supposedly, this service is going to have more recent releases on it, as opposed to Netflix's lag of, well, being slow with new releases going to streaming. That's why we still have the discs. But... I've never really heard of epics, except for in passing on bad trailers at the beginning of DVDs. So I just don't see the point. There's Netflix, there's Hulu, there's Amazon Prime. Why epics? Don't get me wrong. Feel f I've not tried it enough, but. I know I haven't tried it enough, but I also have no interest. 
So why add it? I'd rather see them add, say, iTunes support somehow. Or, let's see, hard drive kits. Yeah, I know that's probably a completely different department, but oh well. But speaking of consoles, I had this random thought while listening to a PlayStation podcast. And they were talking about how they needed to convince their parents to get console X, Y, or Z for them at such and such a time. Well, that's the neat thing about being a gamer parent, is you understand the shininess, the awesome excitement of a new console. But now, as an adult, you also understand the cost. But you'll likely get it anyway, because you agree with those kids. It's pretty awesome. It's quite neat to see a, my children's generation being raised by potentially gamers. It's about time. Hopefully we walk away, away better for it. But we'll have to wait and see. There is now an anonymous social network, by the way. Uh, it's called... Well, what is it called? Well, that's no good when I forget what it's called. Sorry about that. Let's see here. It's called Social Number. So the big advertisement is you're just a number. You don't register your name. You don't register a handle or a nickname. You are just the number. That's it. Cool. I went ahead and signed up. It's pretty small at the moment. Social Number. That's it. I think it's social number. I should have stayed on that screen. Oh, well. It's out there. Check it out. Sign up for it. Participate in some discussions. Let's, uh, let's get this site actually moving. It's very, very new. All right. I don't use Instagram, but supposedly it is now a very good stalker tool. What a waste. Pairing, ironically, pairing this one to come after the anonymous social network is a little bit strange. I'll grant you that. But just stop geotagging images you plan to share online. Just don't do it. They can figure out, and I use the, you know, big they, can figure out who you are or where you are. Well, last but not least, I'll uh, move from that. Just be smart about Instagram and what you post. Please. Just please. A uh, graphic novel writer's advance was stolen by the Fed. So this guy is getting an advance check. And an unpleasant surprise. Because... It got flagged as needing to be watched for money, la money lauder laundering. Oh, it must be getting late. And this guy's just turning, or creating a graphic novel 
a non-fiction graphic novel. They're getting overly paranoid. Far too paranoid. It's a real shame. I wish the writer luck, and I hope he gets his money soon. Is just inexcusable. Oh yeah, and the NDAA was signed into law, the 2013 version. Goody. <laughs> Yay, indefinite detention for American citizens. Well, before I nod off, or start nodding off, I will close out. Remember, you can find me on raptr.com as FlameFlash, and that's all my gaming profiles are hiding over there. Comments, suggestions, podcast at FlameFlash.net, or follow on Twitter, FlameFlash. I'm Flame Flash, and this has been episode 86. Good night.